Hello everybody, I'm Annie Studebaker, Director for the South Texas Initiative for Child Nutrition Through Agriculture. My presentation today is called Pest Detective. Our goal for today is to help you identify beneficial and non-beneficial garden pests and to introduce all natural pest management methods and to encourage soil and plant health. Becoming a pest detective. In order to do so, you need to do daily garden inspections, know the good from the bad, and be prepared for action. Organic pest control for your vegetable garden. Organic garden pest control is a safe and easy way to control those critters that think your food is their food. The most common pests. We'll start with aphids. They're soft-bodied, pear-shaped, and they're in the tender new growth of the plant. They suck the plant juices and they feed on a variety of plants. One uh, way to control these is by using beneficial insects, which are ladybugs. Armyworm. These armyworms feed at night, attack a variety of garden crops, and uh, you can keep the area weed free, hoe it down, because they use these weeds as hosts, and um, you can use parasitic wasps. And what that means is that these wasps lay eggs in these worms and they make them their host. So they produce more wasps. It kills the, the, that worm itself. So that's why they're called parasitic. This is the cabbage looper, also known as the inchworm. And it, it, uh, it's not hard to identify. It uh, attacks the cabbage family. It lays white little eggs on the underside of the leaves. You can hand pick these worms. You can crush the eggs or get rid of those leaves or branches that have an excess amount of the eggs. You can also use parasitic wasps in order to control these. Now we see the cabbage worm. They're green and soft and they leave little holes in the, in the leaves as well. And when they grow up, they turn to be this little white butterfly with little spots, which you will see in a minute. They attack cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, collards, kale, or col and cauliflower. They also, they can be hand-picked. You can uh, remove those leaves that are affected, and uh, we can use parasitic wasps as well. This next picture will show you an adult form of this cabbage worm. Corn earworm. They tunnel to the tips of the corn ears and they're also known as tomato fruit worms. They attack beans, tomatoes, peas, peppers, potatoes, and squash. You need to keep the area tilled and you can use parasitic wasps. And uh, also when the silks are turning brown, if you put one drop of mineral oil or vegetable oil, it will avoid for that worm to get in that, that uh, corn. Cutworm. These worms live by their name. They will cut a seedling right in half. And they attack broccoli, um, young peppers, tomatoes, beans, sunflowers, peas. You need to keep the area tilled. They hide under the ground about an inch deep and about a foot radius. And uh, you can hand pick those as well. And what I have done in the past is I get a plastic cup, cut the bottom out, put it around the new seed seedling plant, and it, it keeps them from climbing up that little uh, seedling plant and eating the stalk. This is the June bug. It feeds on a wide range of garden plants, especially beans, basil, raspberries, and grapes. They hatch into a one-inch C-shaped white grub with dark little eyes. And these grubs feed on roots, plant roots, very dangerous for your crop. Now, you can uh, hand pick these grubs, keep the, the dirt tilled around the plant about two inches below the surface, a foot radius, hand pick those, or if they're June bugs, when it's cold weather, they're easier to hand pick because they move very slowly. And this is the, uh, the gallina ciega, the grub worm. Leaf miner. 
these leave miners leave visible trails, white little trails, and uh, they attack many vegetable crops, including spinach, beets, lettuce, and tomatoes. If you see many infected leaves, you can break those leaves off or uh, trim branches. You can also crush the eggs. You can use ladybugs as beneficial insects as well as parasitic wasps. Mealybugs. They look like little fur or lint. And when they lay eggs, it's like a little cotton ball, fuzzy little cotton ball. We need to get rid of those. And um, they live on the undersides of leaves and they attack on fruits and they attack fruits and vegetable crops such as potatoes and also ornamentals. We can use water to spray them and they'll fall off and then you can pick them and we can use parasitic wasps as well but keep in mind when you spray them down you're also getting rid of beneficial insects so you need to balance that. Scale. Scale hides beneath a shell-like covering. They're uh, very tiny. It could be dark brown or white and you can hand pick it with your fingernail and get rid of it or you can uh, cut off that little branch or leaf if it has too many. You can use parasitic wasps or ladybugs to control this, uh, this scale. Spider mite. They appear to be tiny little um, spiders. They have a, a web-like form and uh, they attack many types of vegetable crops, fruit trees and ornamentals as well. They live and lay their eggs on the undersides of the leaves. If you see a lot of this, you can spray it down. They don't like water. And you can use ladybugs as beneficial insects. Now we have the stink bug. This stink bug will suck the juice out of the leaf and stem of the, of the plant. And um, it, it affects many fruits and vegetables. It has a, a kind of a gray body dark body, it has a little hard shell, a triangular back, and it, um, you, it lays eggs on the leaf itself and you can get rid of those eggs. And you can also hand pick these and uh, use parasitic flies or you can use ladybugs. And uh, in order to know if you have these or you want to get rid of these uh, stink bugs, you lay a board right by your plant. And the next morning, early in the morning, you come back and you let that board sit there all night. And you pick up that board and you're going to find the sting bugs hiding under that board. So you can hand pick them and get rid of them that way. It helps. Thrip. They leave scars on plant tissue, on the stems of the veins of the leaf. On, and you could see they're there. If you want to know they're there, put a piece of paper, a white piece of paper in the bottom. Shake the plant and you'll see little black specks. They attack many types of fruits and vegetables and including asparagus, cabbage, lettuce, onions, and peas. Um, they're not visible to the naked eye, but uh, a beneficial insect would be lacewing. Tomato hornworm, a voracious eater. This is, uh, it devours the leaves and the fruits of all tomato family plants, including peppers, eggplants, and potatoes. It is about three inches long, half inch wide. It has a horn. It's uh, amazing to look at, but it will destroy your plant. You can hand pick these worms. You can use parasitic wasps and keep the area tilled because they do hide under the dirt. White flies. When they come, they usually come in big numbers. Uh, they, um, they extract plant juices from the leaves of the tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce, and many other garden plants, causing them to yellow and wilt. If you see a lot of eggs there, you can clip off that limb or, plant, or uh, leaf. You can use parasitic wasps. Another thing is you could put Vaseline on a yellow index card or paper and just set it down there on the dirt, on the soil, and you'll be surprised how they are attracted to the yellow and they'll stick to that Vaseline and that's another way to catch them. And beware of cute little garden pests. This is my cute little garden pest, my son Ethan. He loves to play with his backhoe when he sees dirt to play with. Pest control mixtures and companions and how they work. Some of them work by smell, 
gases and odor molecules, heat or fumes, oil and soap. The first one we see here is garlic fire spray. All you do is put all these ingredients, garlic, chili pepper, soap, vegetable oil and water in a blender. Mix it up, uh, strain it, put it in your sprayer backpack or whatever sprayer you have and spray the plants. But keep in mind, you know, it does deter pests, but it also deters beneficial um, insects. So you have to balance it, but you do want to get rid of those pests. Fish fertilizer. Same concept as the garlic, it smells terrible and it's oily, therefore it's mothers, those nematodes that are not beneficial and all the mites as well. So, but keep in mind, it does deter beneficial insects, so you have to balance it there. Compost tea. Now this compost tea is made out of compost and it's a method of multiplying beneficial organisms to introduce them back into your garden environment. And, um, it doesn't only provide nutrients, it has been known to deter pests as well, so it's very beneficial. And I also use the back sprayer to spread compost tea. Companion planting, that does not mean you hold hands with somebody and go plant together, no. Um, companion planting assists in the growth of others it, by attracting beneficial insects, it regulates pests, repels harmful insects, provides nutrients, uh, shaded microclimate, and climbing support. Here's an example of companion planting. We have a corn and pole bean growing together and they benefit from each other. The corn serves a, as a stalk, as a trellis for the pole bean. Back in the days of the Native Americans, when they did their planting, they used the three sisters method and what that means is they use corn, bean and squash. They use the corn as the, the trellis, the bean they used pole bean to climb up the trellis and then they planted squash around it and the squash had prickly leaves so it deterred pests around that those three plants so it was very beneficial to the Native Americans. And this picture is uh, companion planting with marigolds. Marigolds is a natural repellent and it helps to eliminate non-beneficial nematodes and this picture is melons and marigolds together. Here's a picture of uh, two of my raised beds in my kitchen garden and in this picture down here I have planted um, pearl onions with carrots. They work together as companions and on the top bed I have planted romaine lettuce and beets in the center and again romaine lettuce and let me tell you they're thriving, they're beautiful. They work as companions. This bed here we have used the cucumber to serve as a shade for the lettuce. We have leaf lettuce planted here and the cucumber will trellis up here and create a shaded area so we can ex stretch the season because lettuce doesn't like a whole lot of sun. Here we have leeks and we have okra. They work together and they, um, they're both thriving other than we had a problem with fire ants. So I used cornmeal right down here as you can see that's cornmeal and got rid of the ants. It worked for us. This bed right here you're not going to believe it but there's strawberries and strawberries they were not doing very good by themselves and the minute I put onions in there because that serves as a companion they started thriving. Now we have beautiful strawberries and they're growing with onions. Who would ever know? This is a picture of my kitchen garden. I'm very proud of it. We have a um, right there we have in ground 25 by 65 area and all this section here is uh, raised beds. Some of them have these cold frames and uh, what these frames are is uh, simply a frame to throw something over them for either insects to keep insects out or to keep the plant warm in the winter and it's been very helpful for us and these this garden here is all planted with a companion. 
helpful tips. Let's not forget that we cannot water in the middle of the day. We need to water our plants when it's cool. They don't like it. And uh, when you see little worms and bugs on your plants, immediately do something about it. Hand pick it, whatever you have to do to get rid of that pest because they will eat that plant. Another thing, if you have aphids in this plant and you're standing right there working at it and then you walk to an area that doesn't, you're taking that problem to another part of your garden. So keep an eye on where you step. In a nutshell, pest control is still necessary if planting an organic garden. And pests love the abundance of food that is available in our garden. Know your pest, become a pest detective, and be prepared for action should you come under attack. Once again, I'm Annie Studebaker. I thank you for being part of the pest management presentation. Thank you.